In managing customer expectations, learning to under-promise and over-deliver is one effective approach, and I encourage you to use it appropriately in your organization. But remember, this is just one tactic for managing customers' expectations, and not on its own an effective long-term strategy. For an effective strategy of managing customer expectations, remember and practice this phrase, clear kept promises. Clear kept promises means that you engage your customer in an ongoing, honest, and accurate dialogue about what they expect and what you promise and what you don't promise too. Then, keep those promises. Over time, your customers will come to expect and appreciate your honesty and reliability. Their expectations will naturally and willingly be managed to match with your promised level of service. Let me give you this example. I recently flew to the United States for a series of business events. It's something I do quite often these days. Now, when I travel, I like to test the service levels of a wide range of air carriers, so I fly on many different airlines. On this particular day, I had a business class seat booked on United Airlines for a 7.30 a.m. departure from Singapore to Los Angeles, with my final destination being Phoenix, Arizona. Well, as it turned out on that particular day, I was just so busy with unfinished matters, I couldn't make a 7.30 in the morning flight. So I decided to postpone my departure from Singapore and take another flight later that afternoon. The only problem is that, at that time, United Airlines doesn't have any afternoon departures from Singapore to Los Angeles. So I returned my ticket to United and called another carrier. Singapore Airlines had a departure at 5.30 in the afternoon from Singapore to LA. So I called to make a reservation. Business class seats, however, were all taken up. There were seats available in economy class and also in first class. Well, when I arrive in the United States, I need to go right to work. So I just wasn't going to put my body through 22 hours of economy class. So I asked the reservations agent, how much is it for your first class seat? She told me a uh, rather significant number. Nonetheless, I made my reservation and I flew that afternoon, Singapore Airlines, first class from Singapore to the United States. You know what? That flight was great. I mean, the seats were big, they reclined back farther, the food was delicious, the service was impeccable. I had a fantastic flight. I even had my own educational experience on board. At one point during the flight, I stood up to just stretch my legs. The first class cabin was very roomy, but I decided to take a little walk. So I walked back into the business class cabin. You know, I got back there and uh, <clears throat> found myself thinking, uh, boy, it's certainly a bit crowded back here and turned right around and walked back into first class. I didn't even think of going into the economy section. <laughs> what a great time for me to notice that even my expectations are continuously rising. Now, I arrived in Los Angeles, and I needed to catch a flight to Phoenix. My previous reservation wasn't good anymore because I'd taken a later flight in from Singapore. So I got out of Terminal 4. I took the little shuttle bus at LA Airport. I went over to Terminal 1, where all of the shuttle carriers have very frequent flights that go from Los Angeles to Phoenix. It's a short flight. They do it every day, all day. I got out, I took my bags, I got in line, and there was a big sign for one of the airlines, Southwest Airlines. The Low Fare Airline. Maybe you've heard of them. Well, it's quite a surprise for me because all of the people behind the counter were wearing, wearing polo shirts and shorts and tennis shoes, and they were bouncing around serving the customers. Well, finally, it was my turn. I came up to the counter. I said, can you get me to Phoenix tonight? They said, yes, sir. We have a flight at 9.30. I said, how much would that be? $72. Well, I was kind of surprised at just how low the fare really was, but I went ahead and paid. And then I started to ask for a particular seat by the window. She looked at me and said, uh, I'm sorry, sir, but we don't have confirmed seat reservations. I thought to myself, well, what's this? I, I want to be on board the flight. And she said, oh, no problem. You'll be on board the flight. Here's your boarding pass. And she gave me a, a large piece of plastic with a big number on it, 67. I said, what's this? And the fellow next to me said, oh, it's your cattle pass. I said, what do you mean by that? Well, the woman behind the counter smiled and said, you see, sir, the way we board the aircraft is 30 people at a time, depending upon what number is on your boarding pass. I said, no assigned seats? She said, no, sir, it's the low fare airline. No assigned seats. 
Okay, I, I understood. So I went up to the gate. I've got to tell you, the scene there was hilarious. 140 people ready to go on this flight, and everybody's hovering around the gate, checking out each other's big number on their boarding pass. Let me see, uh, 31, okay, you're ahead of me. Ah, 69, I'm 67, I'm ahead of you. Well, it was pretty incredible. The woman at the gate was 22 years old. She wasn't wearing a uniform. She was wearing a Los Angeles Lakers t-shirt. Now, when it came time for boarding, she said, okay, numbers one through 30, and 30 people got on board the plane. Then she announced 31 to 60. Another 30 people got on board the plane. I tell you, the minute she announced 61 to 90, I was on that plane in a flash, and I found a seat. It wasn't a window seat, but I got a seat on the plane. During the flight to Phoenix, guess what kind of food they served? Peanuts. Peanuts! But you know, when I landed in Phoenix and I got my bags, do you think I was happy with that flight? You bet I was. Now, was I happy with the first class flight on Singapore Airlines? Yes. Was I happy with the flight from Los Angeles to Phoenix on Southwest? Well, yes, again. How can that be possible when the levels of service were so different? Clear kept promises. Both airlines understood the importance of making clear kept promises to their customers. And with this customer, they effectively managed my expectations. How about you? Are the promises you make to your customers absolutely clear? Or do you allow your customers to invent or even hallucinate their own expectations of what you are going to deliver? How can you do an even better job of making clear promises to your customers? Promises you're going to keep. Promises that lead to effectively managing your customers' expectations.